Stanford University. We'll start a little intro. The final exam for CS193P, uh, iPhone development. Welcome, everybody. We have a f almost full class. Well, not quite full, but more than the most of the term. Um, but uh, here we go. We're going to start off. Um, we'll we'll let, let everybody introduce themselves. So let's go. Round of applause. Yeah. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Dave Jacobs. Uh, for my final project, I made an application that I call Mobile Design. Uh, essentially, it's just your basic vector art program. Uh, I wanted to do this because normal vector art interfaces are really complicated, and I found it to be kind of a challenge to, to fit it all into an iPhone. Um, so one of the ideas I had was uh, to, to reduce on the number of modes that you have. I wanted to uh, encode them physically in the state of the device. So you can see here that uh, to create objects, you hold the phone in portrait mode. Um, and to edit objects, you hold the phone in landscape mode. That way, you don't have to select tools and go back and forth like you do in normal interfaces. Uh, of course, I also have uh, pan and zoom controls, so I reserve all two finger gestures for moving the camera around, whereas one finger gestures were reserved for creating and dealing with objects. Um, so another thing that I, I, I wanted to work on was the fact that you need to have full control over the appearance of the objects. Um, most iPhone applications use a small palette of maybe 10 or 12 colors, but in the, in the case of a um, a design application like this is actually really important that you uh, have full control over the colors. So I, I developed my own custom uh, color picker widget that's actually uh, kind of neat, if I may so, say so myself, where um, you have this hue wheel that you kind of dial around, and it sets the hue of your current color to be the same as uh, the hue wheel's position at the top right. So you can see it's purple here, purple there, orange here, orange there. And so once you have the, the hue chosen, then you can choose your saturation and luminance using the well in the middle. Um, so finally, uh, I also added in some support for loading and saving your vector files. Uh, and, uh, and if you want to share your, your images with other people, you can uh, export your uh, drawings as uh, raster art to your photo album that you can then send as you would any other photo. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. My name is Abe Davis. And I'm Kate. Um, OK. And our project is called Ping, and it's a Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and show you guys a uh, video. Uh, is it just... So here's the game starting. Uh, so we made all our own graphics and particle systems. Oh. <laughs> we made all our own graphics and particle systems, and we're showing you a little bit of the art here, and we'll show you the gameplay better in the next video. Uh, Abe, do you want to talk about the controls? Uh, yeah, so you have a... Um, you have a... So you have a uh, single touch interface which lets you move the character and you shoot in the opposite direction that you're moving. And then there's also a multi-touch interface where uh, if you put down two touches, the touch closest to your character will move your character and the other touch will direct where he shoots. And oh, I just died in, in this video. Oh, and here's the, you know, you can put in your high score. Um, well, I guess we can go ahead and skip to the next one. Okay. Uh, so just to show you that this runs smoothly, in real time on the phone. Here is a, a video of, I guess, me playing it. So gameplay works as you level up. Enemies get larger and more numerous, and they'll split into smaller enemies, which are faster and easier to kill. And you have the interactive heads-up display on the bottom, which shows you your health. And a double touch actually deploys a bomb, which is good for close range. Oh. Yeah, so the, the best strategy for this game tends to be uh, to kind of run away from your enemies, uh, get them running after you, and then lay bombs in their path. Um, okay. So uh, here are emails, I guess. Uh. <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, our app will be available on the iPhone store, hopefully soon. And it'll be even more awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so my name is Mike Gao. This is John Peterson. And we're here to talk to you about Vocal Beater, our application. There we go, Vocal Beater. I think the picture actually says it all. <laughs> okay, so what is it? Uh, we basically, we can beatbox into our phone, and then uh, it gets replaced with, uh, it gets replaced with drum sounds. It gets replaced with actual uh, drum sounds from like a beat machine. 
I think one of the most important parts about the application is that uh, it takes your timing, your human timing, and it actually extracts that and replicates it. And I think uh, in a second here, Michael will actually play a sound clip of something he pre-recorded. Uh, but until then, so Mike actually pre-recorded this. He laid down a track by beatboxing, regular beatboxing sounds, and the application actually extracted those sounds and turned them into real drum sounds. And uh, just a little disclaimer, the interface is going to be changing pretty dramatically. We actually have a graphic artist who's helping us out doing some real graphics. This is sort of our uh, best attempt <laughs> in the time that we had. So this is the, uh, the capture interface showing the uh, recorded waveform on uh, your left there and also uh, the editing on the right. So say we didn't like the particular drum that it detected or we just wanted to change things up, we can actually change it in real time while it's playing back with uh, the interface on the right. So you actually select the waveform that you want to change and uh, you can change it to a kick, hat, snare or delete it entirely. So when you make the loops, sometimes the loop point isn't perfect. It's not looping perfectly. So we have two buttons that lets you basically uh, increase or decrease the loop point to make it loop uh, perfectly. And also this, uh, this image shows you just sort of, uh, it just shows you like a, a little summary of what the, uh, the beats are that you have in the track. And this is the training view. Pretty simple, you just select the button to actually start training uh, each of the drum sounds to make sure that it detects the uh, correct sound. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you everybody. Uh, yeah. The next people. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's Ivan. This is Rudy. And this is George. George. And we're just gonna show you a um, basic video introducing our app. Some say God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. We are seizing on this seventh day to leave our mark on the world through the creation and leaving behind of GPS located virtual objects. We give you your very own virtual world in which to create and take away, to race and to play. Welcome to Upquest, the iPhone's new collaborative immersive reality. setting out to win the amazing race. I'm Conrad Murphy, and my app is called Friction Circle. Um, it helps tell you in real time the forces going on at the tires of your car, so um, you don't get into any sort of trouble. When you're driving, you can use your forces at your tires to propel you forward or help you turn. But if you try and do both at the same time, uh, you can spin out, and that's bad. Um, so first, you got to pick your car. Um, you can save multiple car mo um, models, so you can use it in different vehicles, and it also keeps track of the physical properties of each car, so you can back out what forces are happening on the wheel. Um, then once you get in your car, uh, you have to attach it rigidly, and uh, calibrating it is really simple. You just do it once when you're not moving to take into account uh, where gravity is acting, and uh, once when you're driving straight, so it knows the normal direction of travel of your car. Um, once you get going underway, uh, you get real-time uh, display of, of uh, whether you're the forces um, where they're acting in your car. As you see, if it's green, there's not a whole lot of force. As you 
um, this is a, a braking maneuver. Um, it starts turning orange and all the way back here. Where you're at the adhesion limits, it turns red. Um, also, you can check out your stats, and for each car model, it'll save the, uh, the maximum cornering Gs, braking, and accelerating forces. So uh, you can see how crazy of a driver you are. That's pretty much it. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Matt, and my partner Avishai and I uh, made a game called Pop Friction. Avi is actually in Israel right now pitching an idea of ours to some VCs, but I think we should have a live video feed if that's all set up. Oh, Avi, can you hear me? Oh, shalom. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> uh, wow, so many people. Uh, am I coming through the internet? The, okay, good. Uh, sorry, I cannot be with you all. Uh, I'm talking to VCs here in Israel. Uh, Matt, show them the app. <laughs> Thanks, Avi. So Pop Friction is uh, basically a very powerful procrastination tool. We uh, let you shoot a cannon, you shoot some balls around a screen, and you try to pop some other balls, basically. Uh, so we're going to bring Avi back, and he's going to walk you through a demo of a game that I played last night. Oh, OK. I explained the game. So you have a cannon, and the cannon, he shoots the ball. And the ball is a uh, bounce. And it hit other balls. And the point of the game is to get the balls to pop. And you pop the balls by decreasing their number. And you decrease their number by hitting them. Kind of like, oh, you see in the video? Yeah, decrease the number. And uh, then the pop. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Matt, you're doing very well. Oh, 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 very nice. Thanks, Avi, but I'm in a bit of a bind now. You're a loser. Game over. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> so whenever you get caught playing in a meeting, uh, you can just quit right away and the game will save and pick up right where you left off. Uh, we also let you taunt your friends by emailing them your scores after you play each game. We're also pretty proud of our uh, sound effects, which we recorded in-house uh, back at Yoris. And uh, I think that's all the time we have for today. So, uh, Check out the App Store and uh, Pop Friction. Bye. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Aaron, and this is a Goomba, a bubble-bound space chicken. And like his terrestrial brethren, its goal is simple, to get to the other side. Um, <laughs> now, being bubble-bound, uh, the Goomba can't really move around much on its own, but it is uh, you know, subject to gravity, meaning it falls down when there's nothing below it. Uh, but the catch is, below and down are sort of hard to define because his entire galaxy rests in the palm of someone else's hand. Yours. Um, so this is gravitas, and here you get to play God by adjusting the world to your whims by turning and shaking it. Um, I mean, that doesn't mean life is all fun and games. Between this side and the other lie uh, clusters of gravity blocks, which you can sort of see there, uh, floating in a magnetic field and blocking the Goomba's path. A good shake can jolt them loose, um, causing them to fall down, whichever way down may be at the time. Uh, combined with force fields, magna blocks, switches, and space toads, all of which you must encounter, learn how to uh, interact with, and manipulate, um, saving your Goomba can be pretty tricky. So this is Gravitas, a heavy-handed name for a light-hearted game that's as mind-bending as it is wrist-bending, or what have you. Uh, <laughs> the space chicken strikes back. Uh, the accelerometer-driven interface offers a naturalistic, tactile, and engaging um, gaming experience that only the iPhone can provide, but the large, easily detected movements mean that you can um, take Gravitas on the train or on the bus or like walk with a bounce in your step because you're having so much fun and it'll still, it'll still work. Um, while the turn-based gameplay means that you can uh, play in installments while you wait in line and pick up where you left off after um, taking a call. So basically Gravitas is a quintessential iPhone app because it combines the, uh, it kind of leverages this awesome, powerful iPhone technology, but fits into kind of a flexible, on-the-go iPhone lifestyle. So, get Gravitas, save Goombas. Their fate is literally in your hands. Thank you. Hi, my name is Blair Hoyer, and I wrote, uh, my app is the card game Scopa. Uh, Scopa is an Italian card game. It's played with a 40-card deck. 
um, four suits with numbers one through ten in it. Um, and I'll basically try to explain the game really fast. Um, when it's your turn, you basically choose a card in your hand, um, and then you choose one or more cards on the table that sum up to the value of your card to take. Um, you can either do that or you can discard one of your cards, and then at the end of your turn you get a new card. Um, and basically it goes back and forth until all players are out of cards and then the, the game is over. Um, during the game, if you collect all the cards that are still on the table um, and clear the board, then uh, you get what's called a Scopa, which is worth one point. At the end of the game, uh, points are awarded for four different categories, collecting the most cards, the most spades, the most sevens, and the seven of spades. Um, so I'll basically go through my interface now. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward interface. The computer's at the top, the, the player's at the bottom. Um, and you can see your cards, but you can't see the computers. Um, on, in the center is the table. Um, and in the table, there's also two extra cards. One, the discard place, so you can choose to discard. And also the deck, so you know how many cards are left um, in the game. And then basically, uh, when you want to play, you just tap your card, and then tap two cards, or whatever cards you want to select. Um, you can also just tap your card and discard card in order to discard. Um, and if you've selected a valid move, um, the, the button at the bottom will uh, change from invalid move to make move. Um, so basically, and then once you make your move, uh, it'll be the computer's turn, and there'll be an activity indicator uh, showing that he's thinking. And once he chooses his move, you'll see his card and the cards he selected. Um, and you go through to the end, um, and then it'll show you the score for that round, uh, breaking down the points for each category. Um, it'll show you your score for that game. And then also, the way the game is played is you play a series of games until uh, one player gets 11 points. And once one player has 11 points, a winner is declared. Um, and then at the end, it will say, whoever wins. And you can click OK, go back to the main menu, and start all over again. That's the app. Thanks. Hi, my name is Abel Allison. Um, I wrote an app, it's called Tone Matrix. It's very directly inspired by these two things, the Tenorion and this Flash app called Tone Matrix on the web that I just thought was awesome and would be a great iPhone project. So um, I just have a video of what it is. It's a, a music step sequencer that um, where you can enter the spots where you want a note to play and the red line kind of going across the screen is the current note that's gonna play and so you can just like add notes and okay so the height is the pitch and the horizontal is the space and the measure that you're playing um, but so you can fill in multiple things by just like dragging all over the screen and you can clear it by shaking it kind of like an etch-a-sketch so uh, you have to continually shake it to get rid of all of them because I figured if you accidentally shake it you don't want your whole composition to go away um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the app. Uh, it's done in Open. The, the visuals are OpenGL, and the sound was OpenAL. Um, but it was kind of tricky being able to play like tons of simultaneous sounds all at once. So you have to do some like source management stuff for your sound buffers. But besides that, it was pretty straightforward and cool. But yeah, so that's it. Hi. So. If you're anything like me, you love to go out and look for cool new things to do and maybe cool new sites to explore. Um, but the problem with, it, with things sometimes is they might not be close to you or you're not sure what exactly is going on around you. Um, and when your transportation is kind of limited, that might kind of hinder you. Not, you can't get too far with a shopping cart. Um, so my application kind of brings what's happening to you. It's a location-based application that drops, um, that gives you kind of ideas of what's in your general vic vicinity, what's going on. So you can open up the app and it'll look for spots, sweet spots that are in your area. So right now we have like some pre-registered sites and maybe like concert venues, um, there could be presentations, maybe some cool iPhone app presentations, I don't know. Um, but what's cool too is that you can modify what you think is cool. So you can add a sweet spot to where you're standing. On the other side, people can also rate whether the site is worth checking out or not. So you can give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and kind of say why it's cool or why it's not cool. So with this, you kind of tap into the general collective knowledge of your whole community and kind of see what kind of sweet spots are around you and what's kind of cool. So go ahead, find that sweet spot and check out my app. Um, yeah, so uh, how many of you guys wonder what's going on like 
on any current night. You just want to go out to like a local bar with your friends or find some nightclub that you might like. It's kind of hard to do that. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, my app is kind of similar to Sweet Spot, so that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, it's kind of a tricky problem, right? You have to call all your friends and figure out what they're doing, where they might be going, what they think is a cool place to go to. So my app is kind of a solution to that. Um, it's basically a live event rating system. So basically what we've done is we've set up uh, kind of a listing of local venues that people might have liked or might like. And uh, we basically let you check out what people are saying at those venues on the fly. Um, you can follow friends, so you can add friends through our system and check out places that they've been to and places that they've rated currently and uh, what, those, what they've said at those places. You can keep, ta keep tabs on your favorite night spots, so you can track locations that you've been to that you've liked before and see how they're doing on that current night. And you can also comment and rate those places as you go to them, so you can update those, uh, those venues as you like them. So uh, if, you, if you're interested, you can check out travelatmosphere.com and add your email to our email list and you can uh, get updates as we develop the website and uh, hopefully release the iPhone app in the coming weeks. So, thanks. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Ming Ming. And uh, I'm Shravan. So today our app is Today Screen. So unlike most uh, entertainment apps, today we are talking about a kind of a serious app. So currently what the iPhone really lacks is a glanceable information. This is aimed at power users or mobile users that Whenever they pull out their phone, they really want to see the most critical stuff on their phone. So for, for example, like Windows Mobile, they have like, um, you can see the emails, the appointments, your time, like the most important things up to date. So it's kind of like iGoogle that you use on the web. So what we have now, so we created a today screen. The kind of the idea is that you have widgets, which is extendable. You can customize your screen such that whatever you want to display, how many you want to display. So at a glance, you can have the most important information to you. So right now we have some widgets like time, weather, URL launcher, RSS, fees, and more. So I'm going to talk about um, basically the interface. So on the left, you can see like how you add uh, multiple widgets. So say if you wanted to add like the weather for New York and the weather for Cupertino, you could just do that on the interface. And then you can reorder and customize your interface the way you like it. So the way we imagine this would be used is both for business users as well as casual users. So we, the RSS feeds and the news are highly relevant to business users. And we're also adding support for Twitter and Facebook. So you can just view status messages like, like at a glance of your phone. Um, and we also thought that you could use it as a docking screen. So then if you just dock, put it in your dock on next to your computer, you could have an extra info screen right next to it. So that's today's screen, and thanks. Hi, I'm Alex, and uh, my app's called Towers. And it's uh, kind of similar to Tetris, but with colors. Um, so the idea is that these blocks come down, and you want to clear them so that they don't go off the top. And you want to do that faster than your opponent. Uh, so there's a computer that you're playing against, and it uh, works at different uh, difficulty levels. Uh, and at the highest difficulty level, it's pretty much impossible to beat. Uh, uh, and the cool thing about it is that when you clear these special blocks, you can fire them by tapping with two fingers, and that actually affects uh, the opponent's game. Uh, so this is what the game actually looks like. Uh, as you can see, like when you drop the blocks, um, if you're able to create a row of three, it uh, clears them. And now that block's added to your special block queue, and uh, if you fire it, it would affect the other opponent somehow. So in that case, it created some stone blocks there. So that's about it. Thanks. Hello, my name is Luke, and I made a simple little game called Nemesis. Now, I guess back in the day, 2001, Hasbro created this game called the Nemesis Factor. And it was really simple. You had five buttons, and I ported that over to the iPhone. So the idea is you're presented with these five buttons, and you've got to figure out what the puzzle is. So usually it could be a uh, pattern-based puzzle or some other kind of motion-based puzzle where you would move the thing around and use the accelerometer to try to figure out exactly what happens. And you use sound as a feedback. So if you hit the wrong button, you'll get a honk. And if you hit the right button, you'll get some kind of uh, positive you know, click or something like that. Sometimes you don't get any kind of sound at all, which is like, oh, what's going on? I'll push that button again. Maybe it'll work, maybe it'll honk, who knows? Now. <laughs> The sound effects was really me just sitting there trying to record myself, and I, I put together some sound effects. And uh, essentially, I created a version one. It's got 15 puzzles. 
I use sound, I've got timing, so sometimes you actually have to hit it at the right time, and uh, it'll, it might speak colors to you, so you have to kind of figure out what's going on, maybe some math, it'll say some numbers, kind of add them up, figure out what button to push. So, uh, and also you can use the rotation, if you push buttons and it doesn't work, you kind of rotate it maybe, maybe you get something working. Um, now version one has 15 puzzles, version two, which I, what I would like to release would be 100 puzzles, and I would like to make pretty buttons and add some nice artwork. I didn't really have enough chance to, to do some artwork. I'm, I'm not really the artist. But also I would like to use multi-touch, save the information, maybe how well you did, and also add downloadable levels so when 3.0 comes out, you can actually have downloadable content. So then we have, this is my little mascot that I found on the web, little cat. So hopefully you won't get you know, looking like that after running this thing. Thank you very much. So uh, my name's Eric, and this is Jake, and uh, we uh, figured that since nobody uh, d rides the Marguerite, we would design something that students really want to track. So we designed a Margarita tracker. Uh, <laughs> it actually is a Marguerite tracker, but if you want to use it to get Margaritas, it's useful for that too. Um, first, there's a Locate Me feature for new visitors on campus or for students that just don't want to find where they are on the map. Um, from that, you can see nearby stops, and each of these stops are clickable, and it'll take the data from the Marguerite website and show you for every line on, the, uh, on each stop the next three buses that'll leave and whether they're, they're late. Like in this case, it's about three minutes or four minutes late. Yep, actually update it in real time. We'll get it and scrape it from the website. Yep. And uh, the last part is that you can bookmark stops. So if you find that you know, you're using some stops more frequently than others, you can just bookmark those and consult them really fast. So I figured this is very useful for students on campus or for visitors and uh, hopefully we'll have it available for download. Uh, sadly, though, the, the data we got from PNTS is a little bit broken, so it's kind of um, iffy whether or not you'll get the right stop when you, when you click one. So um, we, we probably ought to fix that before we uh, start distributing it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Yu Hao Ding. This is Dave Tran. And uh, we made a game called Block Attack. It's very heavily inspired by Tetris Attack uh, on the Super Nintendo in 1995. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, we decided that we want to use the touch controls on the iPhone to swap blocks. So the game is basically, um, let's see, oh, that's our start screen, I guess. Um, where's it? It's not going. Oh, it's still, oh, there. So the game board looks kind of like this, and then you're only allowed to swap blocks side, oh, sideways and um, not vertically so but when you connect blocks of three in a row or more then they clear and disappear and then they stay there for a second and then the blocks above it drop down and which makes combos so you could actually um, combo many many blocks together and clear them all so in this one you can clear all of it in one move but it, the no, keynote is just not working <laughs> So um, this. So when the iPhone is actually there, um, what you want to do is touch a block and then touch a block next to it to transfer. So that, that cleared, and then you see the obnoxious clearing there. And when the iPhone reappears, you'll see the rest of the blocks drop down and also clear. Which you'll just have to take our word for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Patrick, and um, so I developed a utility app for managing hourly rates. Because, um, I don't know, I work as a section leader, so a lot of my time's like, oh, it's 2 a.m., uh, I have to grade homework. And it's like, all right, pull up my sticky note, 2 a.m., 2, and then I fall asleep grading, and then it's just like, keeps going. Um, <laughs> so, um, so it really is about managing billable hours, and... Um, really makes it easy for when you work flexible hours and it's not just um, 9 to 5. So uh, the main app is the uh, timer app, and it's just easy, start, stop button. Um, not really much thought needs to go into it, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but it also lets you manage your time. So um, you, can, you have your current working things, and then you have pay periods. Like, I get paid every two weeks. So um, within each pay period, you can uh, get all your details about the pay period. So, um, for example, in May I worked for 11 hours, and I don't make that much. Um, <laughs> so, 
Um, you can also you know, view what's within the pay period. Um, a great feature is emailing the pay period. So um, it actually emails it as a, in a CVS so that you can just copy and paste it right into Excel. Um, and then you know, import it into Kronos or however you want to get paid. Um, so that's my app. Uh, thank you. All right, hey everyone. Um, my app's called Today List. Uh, it's basically an intelligent to-do list for students. Um, rather than sifting through five different syllabuses, um, it will figure out what you need to be doing today based on what's coming up in your schedule. Um, so here's a view of the Today List. Um, the deadlines for today are organized by due date, and um, checking them off will send it to the bottom of the list. Uh, you can edit this information by going into your courses. Um, oh, sorry, that's the wrong image, but uh, you can view the courses you have. Um, the original course screen shows a count of the number of current deadlines you have for that course. And adding a course, you can either do it manually, which creates a new empty course, or you can download it from your school's available courses. Um, through there. Uh, Viewing a course, you see the details, all the existing deadlines. Um, you can delete a course. And for editing deadlines, you can change the title, select the due date, and as well as change the amount of time you want to be notified of that um, deadline in advance. Um, so in the future, I'm probably just going to play with the aesthetics a little, make it a little, the settings more customizable, and uh, hopefully integrate with universities to get uh, that data available. Um, hi guys, my name is Anand Madhavan and uh, my partner is Rohan Jain. He's in India talking to VCs. No, I'm kidding. He's, uh, he's actually in India uh, having a good time while I'm here giving a talk. Uh, so uh, I wrote a, uh, we, we wrote a uh, San Francisco Chronicle based app. Uh, we were approached by a journalism student in, uh, in, uh, and we uh, thought we'd help her out with the uh, app that would interface with SFGate. Um, so the primary, uh, there are a lot of apps there out there like uh, New York Times app and Wall Street Journal apps. and. Uh, None of them are really location sensitive, and so we thought we'd integrate. And then we'd also, uh, you know, browse near, uh, news near you, and also uh, inform of happenings near you. We'll kind of close the feedback loop. Um, so it was really the SFGate, the U edition. Um, so uh, we worked with some initial pro prototypes, uh, did some you know board drawings and uh, uh, initial mockups, which looked pretty crappy and. Uh, uh, in the end, ended up with something like this, uh, which uh, has a bunch of categories in the main page. Um, and uh, uh, when you click on one of the categories, it's a basic live uh, feed reader that reads RSS feeds and uh, shows you the uh, basic uh, article, and uh, you can click on the link. Also have an image pictures view, which uh, if you click on, it'll show you some uh, cool looking um, uh, browsable, uh, scrollable uh, image uh, viewers um, that are finger, flip finger flippable. And um, also, the report news uh, around you button will um, allow you to type a title in uh, card entered in Palo Alto. Uh, you want to report that to uh, everybody in the world. So you uh, can uh, do that. And uh, also, you can uh, view your own reports. And uh, so that's just a basic summary of the uh, features. And we have some preferences for geotagging and uh, also uh, uh, you know, putting in your uh, username, passwords, and uh, things like that. So that will submit. The back end is not ready yet because uh, SF Chronicle is yet to uh, take our APIs, but uh, or provide us with APIs. So we're working on that. And uh, special thanks to Carolyn for uh, brainstorming ideas, interacting with SF Chronicle, and fabulous icons. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Who likes gambling, lying, drinking, <laughs> water? Mischief, and of course, pirates. <laughs> Everybody, right? Uh, welcome to Pirate's Dice. This is a game based off Liar's Dice. Um, it was made famous by that pirate movie. Hope you guys know what I'm talking about. And it's an international sensation. It, it had its origins in South America. And it's a game of skill over luck. Even though it has dice, it's, it's, made, it's best off skill, not luck. Um, I guess my animation's not working, so all my screenshots are overlapping. But uh, it features humans and computers with up to four players. Um, there's custom player creation. You can choose your name and icon, and it, it stores your win and loss records um, in your, on your iPhone. There's a full range of options. Liar's Dice is, uh, I don't know if you guys know the game. It's pretty not common in the US yet, but it's going to be. And uh, there's options like Wild One, Sudden Death. There's just 
there's so many variations. There's even a Stanford variation. Check out the wiki on it. Um, the main feature of my app is you actually get to roll the dice in 3D. So you can flip the iPhone over, you can flip it in three dimensions, and there's a virtual box you can roll as many dice as you want in. I capped it at 20 because uh, it starts getting a little shaky after that, but uh, there's uh, full, full uh, physics supported. Um, there's an animated game board which has a compass and it lets you, it lets spins to the player that you're playing with. So uh, you can it has four you can have four humans and computers playing on the same screen at the same time at different in different directions. Um, you can peek at your dice, so you can. Uh, there's lots of animations and uh, cool effects. I wish I could show you, but <laughs> um, there's even a free mode where you can uh, just use this for any purpose you want. So you can just pop in dice dynamically. You can freeze the gravity. You can pop the dice up to the top of the screen to check what you got. You can even move the dice around with your fingers when they pop up. Um, some more screenshots, which is one more, I guess. <laughs> there's the main menu. There's there's a help section, which has a wiki-like setup. There's um, the results page. There's winners and losers pages. And there's a, even a feedback page at the end, because I thought everyone was going to get it, but it's cool. <laughs> um, and I want to make this game uh, on the App Store as soon as possible. So if you guys want to help me out, um, you can email me at piratesdiceapp at gmail.com. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is William, and I'll be presenting an app called Motivate. And it's an application that helps you meet your goals by providing one of the greatest incentives there is, which is a guilt-free purchase of an item off your wish list. Um, so um, if you are a Discord student who is no longer motivated, and, or a middle-aged businessman who can never remember his New Year's resolutions, or just an impulsive shopper who never can afford what she really needs, then this app is for you. So it's very simple. Uh, first, you set up your goals. So it's uh, mostly like a traditional goal manager, uh, but you can assign points to each goal depending on how difficult or important you think uh, that goal is to you. And, and then you can import your Amazon wish list into your app, and uh, the app will assign points depending on the price of the item, but you can fiddle around with that. Uh, and then you can keep track of your progress, um, just kind of like in a board game form. So you can like see what what uh, products that you're eligible to buy, and uh, look at what goals you've already completed, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I'm Chris, and this is Rock Journey, a testament to the human spirit. Um, so I want to do something with GPS, uh, with travel, a little bit of social networking. Um, so I came with Rock Journey, and with Rock Journey, you create a rock, you give it a name, you select an image to uh, personalize it. Um, and you pick a destination anywhere in the world. And if you can't decide, you get a random destination. And then, so now you have this rock, and your goal is to get this rock back home. And you do this by physically bringing your rock to that location. And of course, some places are a little bit too far away for one person to bring their rock. So instead, you can drop the rock uh, at a given location anytime you want. And someone else who comes by who's searching for rocks can pick up this rock and carry it further. So together, we, our goal is to bring all these rocks back home. And um, of course, some of us find it hard to let go of our rocks. Um, we become very attached. So you can also keep track of your past rocks. You can see how they're doing. Um, you can see which ones are traveling, which ones are resting, um, and which ones they made at home. Um, so hopefully, together, we can get all these rocks back. And I hope to add a few more features before I release it, um, maybe sometime in July. Um, but if you can't wait and you want to get on the email list, go to uh, rockjourneyapp.com. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm John Silcox. I'm Claire Kazemset, and our app is called Musical Magnetic Poetry. Um, so if you've seen those like fridge magnets that have words on them, and you can connect them to make like, poetry. Um, yeah, so our app is, is along the same lines. Um, so instead of words, we have motives, which are short patterns of musical notes. Um, you can tap a block to play the motive. You can connect them to make a longer phrase. You can even stack them to play them at the same time. And you know, if you're working on some great composition, and there's something that would sound good with it, but you need to change the pitch of it, you can do that as well. Um, so we offer a few extra features. So let's say, um, so by default we use C major, but if you're feeling sad that day, like you could change it to C minor and everything just becomes sad. Um, uh, so that's one thing, and we have a few other things too. And if you get sick of what's on the screen, you can just shake the phone, and then um, it'll just generate a fresh set of blocks for you automatically. So this is just to demonstrate how easy it is to connect tiles. Um, you just move them next to each other, side to side. Uh, you can also combine them top to bottom. As you know, tap, you can tap them to play them, 
once you've actually put your whole block together, you can go into settings, adjust some of the settings. Uh, we'll drop the tempo a little bit, and then when we, we simply tap it and listen. At any point during this, you can, you can tap the block once again to stop it, but we're going to listen to the whole thing because I like this piece. And then when you're done, or any time in the middle, you can split the blocks first vertically and then horizontally using a two-finger gesture. And finally, whoa. Oops. Finally, there are a number of people that we'd like to thank, uh, because without them, this just wouldn't have been possible. So thank you. Hello, my name is Ming, um, and I developed Pilcrow. Now, uh, one fateful Monday morning, I was struggling to come up with a useful app idea, and I went the other way instead. What is the, <laughs> sing what is the single u m most useless, geekiest thing I could possibly make? A character palette. Uh, not only that, a Unicode uh, character palette. So, <clears throat> what this supports... Uh, <coughs> so, using multiple fonts, um, in addition to the system fonts, um, you can uh, browse through um, quite a few characters um, on, on, your, uh, on your phone <coughs> um, and, uh, and see their names as well. Um, this app supports all of uh, Unicode 5.2, which came out recently. Yeah, a little disclaimer. Um, minus the 60,000 or so not included in the fonts uh, that I bundle with. Um, so you got your typical scripts like Latin, your uh, slightly less typical um, scripts like Greek. Yeah. All right. Uh, your uh, really less typical scripts like Braille. Um, and cue the gratuitous animation because there's lots of scripts supported by this. <coughs> um, so a little, uh, a little Easter egg here is that um, apparently the iPhone stores emoticons and other neat things in um, the private use area of Unicode. Um, so you get those too. <coughs> um, now the reason I say this is so useless is because um, the project was due last night, of course, and iPhone OS 3.0 hasn't come out yet, so there's no copy-paste. You can't really do much with these characters. Um, anyhow, that's it. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to GoaPet. Um, this is an app that my partner and I came up with. This is basically a hybrid of a to-do list and a virtual pet. <laughs> All right, so here's a Go pet. And this is the virtual pet that you, one of the virtual pets that you can choose to link to your daily to-do list. Um, so the basic app involves a to-do list where you can add new tasks and set a deadline for each task. And if you check these tasks off before they pass the deadline, then your pet's health goes up and you get a little animation. If you fail to do that, then your pet's health goes down and you have to finish that task before the health starts going back up again. So as the health increases, as you finish more tasks, the Go Pet evolves and uh, reacts according to your, your actions. So hopefully the Go Pet can help people add a little more fun to their daily tasks. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Byung, and my app is You Poet. Uh, one of the groups back did musical magnetic poetry, and this is regular magnetic poetry. Um, so the interface is pretty simple. Uh, you got movable type. You can move around the screen. If you move, like, type around and push into other type, it will move, so it's like real magnets. Um, you can delete words, hide the lower bar if you don't want it, and yeah, landscape mode is supported. You can zoom in, zoom out, because uh, the magnets might be a little too small for your finger. Oops. And you can actually set the background picture, because I got a little bored with just the standard gray background. So you can set like scenes from nature, or impressionist paintings, pictures of your girlfriend. Uh, pictures of yourself, you took in photo booth, <laughs> cookie monster. <laughs> um, yeah, and another feature I added was you can actually change the word set. So if you get tired of the default word set, you can change. It comes with like words from Hamlet or words from Heart of Darkness. 
And you can actually add new word sets um, by typing in any random URL. So if you want to use words from like the New Yorker or the Onion, just type in theonion.com. It'll go and parse the HTML into a dictionary and turn it into a word set. So actually using the words from <laughs> the CS193P website and this picture of Evan I found on Google Images. I, it's my tribute to you, Evan. Um, yeah, that's my app. Thanks. All right, my name is Daniel. I made a blackjack card counter. Uh, the purpose of this app is for educational purposes and to have fun, practice your blackjack skills, uh, train yourself at card counting. It's not intended for use in casinos. I don't really want anyone to get into uh, trouble with that. Um, so there's a lot of blackjack card counting apps out there, but most of them use these very naive methods that are designed for people that are very simple, easy to keep track of. This app utilizes the power of the iPhone, and it actually runs a simulation at every point based on what's left in the deck to come up with the, the best play. Uh, it tracks all the cards that have been played, both in your hand and other players at the table. You can modify the deck, do whatever you want. Uh, and it also can be used to create random blackjack scenarios for practice or for fun. So here's just a, a picture of the app. It's just got a single screen. Uh, top left, you can see your, your kind of table view. Uh, you have the dealer's cards, you have your cards. Uh, you can hit stand, do any of the actions. The bottom left, that's kind of the, the heart of the app. It's where it uh, runs the algorithm to come up with the, the best play at any given time. And on the right side, you can uh, add or remove cards from the deck to, to uh, adjust for your specific scenario. Thanks. So I'm Max, and I, it's, my app is tentatively called I Mustache. So basically, the idea is that you know, you're sitting in class and you're bored. Oh, uh, more up. And you, know, you think, you know what would make this class a lot more exciting? If Evan had a big mustache on his face. <laughs> just so much more exciting. Um, or you know, you're just surfing the net, and you find this really awesome picture of Alan, <laughs> which doesn't really need a fez hat, but you, know, you can always add a fez hat to make it more funny. Um, a few of the other views, um, you can choose any picture that you want. Uh, it has a, a UI tab controller of image picture controller, so you can choose you know, a picture that you have, or you can take a new one. Um, or you can upload it to Twitter using TwitPic, so you can show all your friends how awesome Alan looks. Um, uh, things you can do with it, one of the cool things is that you can either like freely rotate the uh, images that you add, the objects that you add, like the mustache can be resized or whatever, or you can double click it and it will stay and lock itself to the background. And so I wish I made a video. But uh, basically, someone is uh, doing a reverse pinch and expanding it. As you see, it's getting bigger. And the fast hat stays exactly where you set it. Where you set it. And that's about it. Thanks. All right, everyone. Um, we've got about another hour uh, for you to sit around here and draw mustaches on me, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just want to say, you know, your, all of your projects were, were really impressive. Uh, I think I speak for all the staff when I say, you know, you totally exceeded our expectations. Nice work, and uh, hope you keep it up. Thanks. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.